All right, boys and girls, tomorrow will be show and tell. I want all of you to share something that you all love and enjoy doing. Don't forget to bring along an item or a picture to show all your friends in class. Have a wonderful day, students. Pack up and get online. As soon as Mrs. Camila ended the class, all her first graders jumped up from their seats and grabbed their backpacks from the hangers in the closet. It was just minutes before they all lined up to head out to the gymnasium where their parents were waiting for them to pick them up after school. Lucy Walker was still writing down her homework in her agenda. Mrs. Camila brought her backpack and her jacket over for her. Come on, Lucy, let's go, it's getting late. Lucy hurried to put on her jacket and her special scarf. That's a really nice scarf you have there. Thank you, Mrs. Camila. It's my mom's scarf. How is she doing? Scarf. How is she doing? Last time I spoke to your father, he told me she was sick. Well, Daddy says she's doing better, but she still needs a lot of rest. Lucy ran to get online. She couldn't wait to spot her dad in the crowd and get back home. My daddy's here, Mrs. Camila. Bye. See you tomorrow. Take care. Lucy lived a little far from the busy part of town. Every day, her dad would buy her some cookies and chocolate milk from the store outside her school, after which they would drive all the way back home. They lived in a small house near Rady Park, and Lucy loved watching the trees and plants on the way there. Sometimes, she even spotted a few deer. But today, Lucy sat back in her seat, trying to figure what she would bring into school tomorrow for show and tell. She wanted her presentation to be the best, and maybe Mrs. Camila would even give her one of those stickers that you can scratch and smell. It was about a 30-minute drive until they finally reached home. But there was still another 5 minutes to wait, because Lucy's dad was always overprotective about everything. He had installed a security system, not to mention a number of locks on the door, all which took a while to open. Dad, why do we have so many locks again? To keep out strangers, love, Daddy has to make sure you and Mom are safe. Remember the number one rule? Don't talk to anyone you don't know, and never take anything from them. I know, Daddy. The other day, some bad people were knocking on our door, and Mom didn't open. She said we have to wait for you to come home. They were ringing the bell for so long. Well, she did the right thing. There could be dangerous people out here. You shouldn't open the door to random strangers, right? But don't worry about these things, Lucy. Your mother knows what to do. When Lucy got inside, she rushed to hug her mother, who was cooking dinner, while her dad began setting up the security system again. In this house, there were some strict rules and regulations, and there wouldn't go one day that Lucy would have to go through the rules with her mother. No going out to the backyard, no keeping the doors or windows opened or unlocked, no making too much noise, and of course, no breaking any rules or else. Lucy figured her father was just worried for them, hence all the rules and the or else. She could never imagine him to be anything but nice. As a matter of fact, her dad had even made her a life-sized dollhouse for her in the playroom, where she and her mother played every evening before bed. So how was your day, sweetheart? Tomorrow's going to be a big day, because I have to bring in something for show and tell. I wish I could bring in my dollhouse. Your dollhouse? All right. I think I can manage fitting it in your backpack. You're so silly, You're so silly mom. All right. What if you take your doll to school? That's actually a good idea. I love playing with my dolls. After a whole hour of playing with her mother, finishing up her homework and having dinner, Lucy finally went to bed. But she was so excited about her day at school that she couldn't sleep. All she thought about was what she was going to say. She did like playing with her dolls, but what she liked more was playing with her mom. But she couldn't possibly bring in her mother to show and tell. Or could she? What if she took a picture of her mother along with the doll? Perfect. Lucy wasn't allowed to be up and out of her room at this time of the night, but it was only a small trip to the cupboard where there was a few albums and back. Sneaking to the living room, Lucy took down the albums, but she was disappointed seeing they were all pictures of her. She put it back right in place and went to her dad's room. 
she knew her dad wasn't there. Dad had his workshop down in the basement, where he stayed late into the night. No one was allowed down there either, another strict rule in the house. Well, honestly, no one meant only Lucy, because her mom always went downstairs to help out her dad with work. Lucy sometimes heard clanking and pounding noises, sometimes they made her scared. Her mother had warned her about them. It's not safe for you to go down there, okay? But what are all those noise, mom? That's just machinery, dangerous things you better stay away from, or else your father will get very angry. Lucy figured that's where her dad had made her dollhouse for her. She quickly slipped into her father's room and began searching the desk and drawers. She finally found a scrapbook with pictures of her mother, but none of them were good pictures. Some were blurry, her mother blinked in some, and some she didn't even smile. Lucy finally picked out one picture that looked a bit better than the others, and another when her mother was younger. Lucy liked that one more, because she looked a lot like her mother. All she had to do was tie her hair just like that. Although her mother was way prettier than her, Lucy leaned more towards her father. The next morning, Lucy was bright and early. She rushed to have her breakfast and jumped into the car waiting for her dad. You look excited. I know, today's show and tell. I'm going to show all my friends the doll you brought for me. All right, Lucy, it's your turn now, come on up. This is one of my many dolls that my dad got for me. He also made me a life-size dollhouse where me and my mom play together. If there was one thing I enjoy doing, it's playing with my mom. I even brought a picture of my mom. I even brought a picture of her. Lucy went around her classmates showing the picture. She lastly went up to Mrs. Camila. Lovely Lucy, what a wonderful experience you've shared today. Mrs. Camila said, passing a glance at the picture. She went to bring out her stickers just when she stopped and turned back to Lucy. She furrowed her brows and asked Lucy, Lucy, can you give me that picture again? Sure. Mrs. Camila looked at the picture closely. Seeing the look on her face, Lucy said, She looks just like me, doesn't she? Mrs. Camila looked at Lucy, unable to speak. She was shocked. She recognized the young girl in the picture. Is your mother's name Isabella? Yes, how did you know? Because she was one of my students. It was 13 years ago, at the time, Mrs. Camila had just started working as a teacher. She used to teach elementary grade students and tutor some middle school students at the nearby library. One of her many students that she met at the library after school was Isabella Jameson. The young girl was intelligent, quick at learning new topics, but what made her stand out more was her deep blue eyes and her lovely rosy cheeks that made everyone who looked at her smile. But that's not why Mrs. Camila remembered her. It was in the year 1995 that Isabella went missing. Mrs. Camila had gone to the police for questioning along with many other people. Her parents were devastated when they couldn't find their daughter after they had went out to the park together one evening. However, with the clues and evidence and some eyewitnesses from the surrounding location from where Isabella was last seen, it was confirmed that the young girl was abducted. Police searched for many months to no avail. However, her parents didn't give up and continued searching, but when years passed by, they started to lose hope and the case was eventually closed. It was as if Isabella Jameson had vanished. Nobody knew where she went or who took her until now. Who's there? Who's there?
Elementary school teacher Camila Sanders was found lifeless in her apartment. Her home was ransacked. Police are saying this may have been an attempt at a robbery, however. All the teacher's valuables were found in the apartment untouched. Security footage has revealed a man wearing a hat and a long coat. Unfortunately, his face could not be identified. As the investigation continues, stay tuned for more updates. BII News, Warrenton, Virginia. Wasn't she one of Isabella's teachers? Yes, that's Mrs. Camila. She used to tutor Isabella at the library. Something's not right, Anne. This doesn't seem like a robbery. Ever since Gerald Jameson had seen the news report of Camila Sanders' mysterious death, he had a strange doubt there was something more to this. Gerald's own daughter, Isabella, had gone missing many years ago. And it was during the investigation that police had questioned Mrs. Camila out of many other teachers and students who had seen and interacted with Isabella prior to her disappearance. As far as Gerald knew, Mrs. Camila was a decent, loving, caring woman. If this wasn't a robbery, why would anyone be after her life? And somewhere deep down inside, Gerald had a glimmer of hope that this might have something to do with his own daughter's disappearance. Could this lead him to find out what happened to her? So Gerald went out to investigate the matter. Mrs. Camila was a first grade teacher at the BII elementary school. But she also tutored other students like she tutored Isabella. Gerald had a cordial relationship with the school's principal for many years now. In fact, when Isabella had gone missing, the principal had arranged for banners and flyers all over the neighborhood in search for the missing student. But unfortunately, nothing worked to find her. Gerald, you haven't been here in a long time. I saw the news report about one of your teachers, Mrs. Camila Sanders. She was found lifeless. Yes, it's quite unfortunate. Maybe there were some issues in her neighborhood. Strangely, just days before the incident, I had noticed she was coming to school a bit later than usual, which was not like her. I called her to the office to speak with her, and she seemed a little disturbed. And this morning, I woke up to see the news. After speaking with the principal, Gerald became all the more suspicious. Things just weren't adding up. Why did he feel like something wasn't being said? Something more had to be there. So Gerald decided to go to Mrs. Camila's apartment building. As he entered the building, he asked one of the tenants about her. Perhaps her neighbors could give him a clue. Excuse me, would you happen to know which apartment Mrs. Camila Sanders lived in? May I know who you are? She used to be my daughter's teacher. I see. Have you seen the news? Yes, that's actually why I've come here. It's truly tragic what happened. She was such a nice woman. I used to see her every morning. It's been hard accepting how something so horrible could happen to her. Weren't there any noises? Anything? How could the robber simply get away? No, we didn't hear anything. When Mrs. Camila stopped coming out of her apartment, we all got a bit suspicious and, and soon enough we saw the police show up. Thanks to the neighbor, Gerald was able to find Mrs. Camila's apartment. Was there any way he could go inside? Whoever got into the apartment must have climbed down the fire escape from the rooftop. So late that night, Gerald climbed down the fire escape and broke in through the kitchen window. He walked around the dark apartment, stopping at the white outline of where Mrs. Camila's body was found. Everything was messed up, the drawers, closets, opened and emptied out onto the floor. The sofa and mattresses flipped over. The police had probably taken into possession the last of the clues, if there were any. Was there any use of breaking in here? What was Gerald doing? Gerald Jameson? Yes, I'm here. Come with me. The doctor will be seeing you now. Suffering from a lot in his life, still overwhelmed by the loss of his daughter, Gerald had taken an appointment with a therapist, Dr. Edwin Walker. He walked into the room and was warmly welcomed by him. Take a seat, Mr. Jameson. 
Thank you. So tell me, what brings you here? Doctor, I think I'm losing my mind. My daughter had gone missing a long time ago. But I feel like she's still around. I keep searching for her. A missing child. How long has it been? Too long. Years. And how about your wife? How is she coping? How about your wife? How is she coping with all this? You two live together, I suppose. Yes. Now it's just me and my wife. She tries to counsel me. Even the police have implied perhaps my daughter is dead. But I can't help but feel I'll find my daughter one day. Well, Mr. Jameson, it's not unusual for parents to feel this way. In fact, this process of mourning and depression is part of the recovery. How are you sleeping at night? I don't get much sleep. It's hard rethinking everything from the past. I feel like as a father, I'm the one to blame. I didn't take care of her like I should have. Doctor, do you have a daughter? Yes, I do. And I can understand a father's love. How about I prescribe you some medication and we can schedule two or three therapy sessions every week? Thank you, doctor. After taking his prescription from the reception that day, Gerald picked up his medication and went back home. Visiting Dr. Edwin turned out to be the answer to his problems. And after a few days, Gerald decided to meet Dr. Edwin again. It was on the next Sunday evening, while Edwin was home reading the newspaper, that he heard the doorbell ring. He usually didn't have many visitors over at his place. This was quite unexpected. He opened the door surprised to see one of his patients. Mr. Jameson, you're here? I actually brought over a gift for you. After talking to you that day, it really helped me and I wanted to say thank you. This is all very kind of you, Mr. Jameson, but it was my duty as a doctor. Mr. Jameson peered inside, looking at a young girl peeking out from behind the curtains. Is that your daughter? May I come in? Sure. Gerald followed Dr. Edwin inside as he called out his daughter to meet him. Her name is Lucy. Lucy, what a sweet name. Gerald handed the little girl the present and smiled. This is for you. Really? Thank you, mister. Lucy grabbed the bag and ran off to open it. Doctor, I've actually come to speak to you about a few things. I hope you wouldn't mind. No, of course not. Go on. Have you seen the news recently? A teacher from the BI elementary school was killed when robbers broke into her apartment. Yes, I have. I knew her. She was my daughter's teacher. Really? Now isn't that a coincidence? My daughter and your daughter had the same teacher. Now that I think about it, my daughter used to go to a therapist. The guidance counselor from her school had advised it. How strange would it be if they had sent her to you? No, no. I don't remember anything like that. You must be mistaken. mistaken. Are you sure? You don't know my daughter? It wasn't you? Gerald scurried through his pocket. I actually have a picture of her. Maybe if you see it, you'll remember. He took out the picture and showed it to Dr. Edwin. Is this the picture you were searching for that night in the apartment? That night, when Gerald had broken into Mrs. Camilla's apartment, he found the whole place ransacked. The culprit might not have come to steal any valuables, but from it seemed, he had definitely come in search of something. But even when Gerald searched, he couldn't find anything that could lead him to some insight of what happened there. But it was during his search that he stopped at a book, placed on one of the shelves. He remembered this book. Dad, tomorrow's Teacher's Day, and I want to get Mrs. Camilla a gift. She's my favorite teacher. Sure, sweetheart. How about we stop by the store before you have class with her today? This. This is perfect. She's always saying how much she loves Hubert Stein's books. And there's a puzzle in it. If you solve it, it opens a secret compartment inside. Can we buy this book, Dad? It was many, many years ago that Gerald had bought this book himself. His daughter had gifted it to Mrs. Camilla. 
He took it off the shelf, cherishing those moments he spent with his daughter. He opened it, and as soon as he solved the puzzle, two pictures fell out from inside. He was shocked to see the picture of his own daughter, but these were recent pictures. He was right, his daughter was alive. But who was this? A young girl that he didn't recognize. He flipped it over to find a small signature made by Lucy Walker. In search to find who Lucy Walker was, Gerald went back to the school and found out she was a student there. He waited at dismissal and spotted the young girl, but more importantly, he spotted who had come to pick her up, her father. The same therapist his own daughter went to, Edwin Walker. As soon as Edwin saw the picture in the old man's hands, he became furious. This was Isabella's picture. Isabella Jameson was a sweet, beautiful young girl who went to the BII elementary school. She was the only child of her parents and a bit spoiled. For the most part, Isabella was well behaved and she listened to her parents. And things were fine. Until Isabella graduated and moved on to junior high. And like most other teenagers, she began doing crazy things. She started getting into trouble at school, then boys came into the picture. It was a tough time for Isabella. And it was soon enough that she was caught harming herself. When one of the teachers had noticed cuts on her hand, she immediately sent her to the guidance counselor who recommended her to a therapist, Edwin Walker. So tell me a little about yourself, Isabella. Are you going to tell my parents? No, it's part of my job that I keep my patient's information confidential, meaning it will only be between me and you. When Edwin saw Isabella, he felt a strange attraction to her. And over the days of counseling with the young girl, his desires became stronger. You look happy today. Yes, tomorrow evening there's going to be a carnival at the local park, and my parents are going to take me there. I'm pretty excited. It was that evening at the park, in the midst of the crowd, that Edwin had gone to see Isabella. But not with the right intentions. Dr. Walker, you came here too? Yeah, I wanted to show you something. Come with me. He had kidnapped Isabella that evening, and for the last 13 years, he had kept her locked in this house, had made her his wife despite her wishes, and even had a child with her, Lucy. When a year had gone by and the police had closed Isabella Jameson's case, Edwin thought he would never get caught. But it seemed that not everyone had forgotten about her. Edwin knew he was caught. He had to run. He turned to look at his daughter for the last time, before he attempted to flee. But before he could get far, Gerald caught hold of him from behind. You're not going anywhere. The police are on the way, surrounding this house. Unfortunately, in this age, Gerald didn't have the strength to hold down this man. Edward hit Gerald as hard as he could with his elbow and ran into the house and out the back door. Gerald tried to go after him, but he knew he wouldn't be able to catch him. He immediately got hold of Lucy, who looked awfully scared. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Gerald called the police, and in just moments, they arrived at the scene. Speaking to Lucy and searching the entire house, they were eventually led to the basement, where they found Isabella Jameson. Mr. Jameson, if only you had contacted us before coming here, we would have caught the man. He wouldn't have been able to run away. I know, but I really wasn't sure. When Isabella saw her father, after all these years, tears filled her eyes. Dad, 
Isabella, I knew I would find you. I never stopped trying. Forgive me for taking this long. Mom, Lucy nervously said, clutching onto Isabella from behind her. What's happening? Why are the police here? Isabella brought her out. Lucy, this is mom's dad. Dad, this is my daughter. I know, Lucy, she helped me find you. It's time we finally go home, daughter. Let's go. But just as Gerald and Isabella were leaving this home forever, leaving behind all the dreadful memories, Lucy tugged onto her mother's hand. Mom, isn't dad going to come with us? Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.